Stocks this morning, shares of Lyft jumping in pre-market trading this morning. The ride-hailing company posting a 13 cent per share profit. Analysts had expected a loss as travel rebounds from the lows of the pandemic. Lyft forecast an adjusted operating profit of $1 billion in 2024. Joining us right now on Squawk Box is Lyft President John Zimmer. John, uh, congratulations uh, on the quarter, uh, on the news. Um, We've been talking actually about how you and Uber, we might be getting to a point of escape velocity here. And I know there's been a lot of folks waiting for this moment. Yeah, it feels great to have a, a strong quarter. The team did phenomenal. Uh, as you mentioned uh, in the preview, we hit our, our record uh, adjusted EBITDA. Uh, and so all around, we made some really uh, tough decisions uh, that, that have paid off. Can we talk about those tough decisions? Because I think what's happened uh, over the last 12 months has been a transformation in the marketplace and how you uh, and your competitors have had to think about growth on one side uh, versus profit, how to try to pull some of that profit forward, but how much you do that at the expense of growth. Yeah, no, uh, I think this, this quarter we made some really smart decisions overall uh, and, and didn't have a huge trade-off in, in growth here. So, uh, you know, rides... Uh, are at an all-time COVID high. Uh, riders uh, added 2 million and at our all-time COVID high. Uh, and so overall, uh, feel, feel great about the decisions we made. What we did do is we slowed hiring dramatically uh, and we focused and prioritized projects within our rideshare group uh, on uh, those that had the highest ROI uh, and profitability in, in the near and long term. How concerned are you about pricing going into the fall and the strength of the consumer? Uh, you know, what we saw, if you normalize for the gas surcharge, which we added for drivers 55 cents, prices actually came down because we're getting better service levels, levels uh, because drivers are coming back to the platform. Uh, we're actually able to have less of the dynamic pricing, what we call prime time. Uh, and so we're actually seeing uh, improvements on, on pricing uh, and service levels. And, and though in terms of, though, the strength of the consumer, are you seeing any shifts in terms of uh, th those of us who consider ourselves cheapskates, for example, who are, you know, arbitraging, going, taking a yellow cab in a place like New York relative to jumping in, uh, jumping in a lift. So given, some given things are hard to see because differences. we're coming off of such a low from the pandemic uh, and seeing increased demand. It's hard to say, you know, could it be faster? Uh, probably. Uh, and we would love that. Uh, but we are seeing good, strong demand to come back uh, and the return of drivers to the platform uh, in, in better and better numbers uh, is making the service levels and pricing uh, much more reasonable. In terms of actually getting more drivers on the service, how much of it is bringing former drivers onto the service versus new drivers onto the service? It's both, and we're seeing both numbers tick up. Uh, the, the last quarter we saw, the majority of our drivers came in organically, meaning you know, not, not from you know, promotional or marketing activities. Uh, we're seeing our driver engagement spend come down on a per ride basis. Uh, so both existing and new are, are helping us uh, reach those new service levels.